what certifications should your financial advisor have? I'm going to help you with that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, technically, after my name, the credentials that I have, certified financial planner, chartered financial consultant, um, enrolled agent with the IRS, uh, accredited investment fiduciary, and I've held some others as well. And I'm not bringing that up to impress anyone. In fact, I've had some and I've let some drop as well. All of those weren't to get some alphabet soup after my name. It was to, to get the knowledge and the wisdom that I could then use to apply to help serve people and help them make better choices in their financial life. And this isn't just me. This is every advisor on the Corhorn Financial Group team. And so the question is, what credentials, what licenses, what uh, certifications should your financial planner have? Should your financial advisor have? Okay, this is confusing, right? Should they ha should they be a CPA? Should they not have any licenses what, or, or or certifications? What should what should you expect your the certifications and licenses de designations? What should you expect your your financial advisor to have? Well, I'm going to start at the top. And I say this in almost every video and myself and Josh and Kevin, when we do the full uh, Wise Money talk show every Saturday that airs right here on this channel, we're gonna tell you every single show, you need to be working with a certified financial planner. That's the baseline. That's the bare minimum. It's, it's, it's the equivalent, guys, and just not exactly, but it's like having a master's in financial planning, but more directly, right? A master's in finance um, from a from a university typically doesn't line up well with personal finance. So a certified financial planner, you're gonna go through, that advisor is gonna go through some additional uh, education in each of the six areas of financial planning. That additional education is a lengthy textbook and an and analysis, a, 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 a test um, that's difficult, challenging, not something you can just breeze through. It's, it's difficult. And then a case study that they've got to do after they take all six of those prerequisites. And then they've got to take a board exam. Now, back in my day, this board exam was a two-day test. And, you know, I remember actually, so I, I, I had to go, I can't remember uh, where it was, Chicago maybe, or any Indianapolis something to take the the board exam and it was two day exam and the proctor before he started said okay look to your left look to your right one of you will pass this thing and now it's gotten much easier for the kids uh, it's now down to one day and but it's still very difficult okay and all of that is the educational requirement but then to also have your CFP you've got to have a certain amount of experience you've got to have a certain uh, baseline education you got to have a bachelor's degree and then You've got to um, adhere to the ethics of the uh, of the certified financial planning board. That allows someone to be a certified financial planner, and then they've got to keep up on continuing education. Guys, at a baseline, you've got to be working with a certified financial. You've got to be working with a financial advisor that is certified, a certified financial planner. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you, we always say that's that's not enough. They've got to be doing comprehensive financial planning. That's truly what you need, but it's got to be a CFP who's doing comprehensive financial planning. So what else? What other designations or, or certificates do they need? Do they need a CFA, Chartered Financial uh, Analyst? No, they don't. I, I would say no, they don't. Now I've kicked that around. Other team members on the KFG team have kicked their, that around as well. That's more of an in-depth analysis on buying and selling individual stocks, okay? So, so analyzing a, the value of a company, not analyzing financial planning for an individual or for a business. And so is it helpful to have? Sure. But if that's the only thing that that advisor has, they're just going to try to help you with investments. They're not going to help you with financial planning, which is what you actually need. Chartered financial consultant, do they need that? that? That CHFC, they don't need that. It's just an additional uh, concentration or some additional education in some of the six areas of financial planning. So that would be not a requirement as well. 
What about a Series 7 license? Series 7 license allows someone to sell securities as a broker. You, I would argue, you don't necessarily need your financial advisor to do that. You want your financial advisor to be a financial planner, someone that's actually giving you advice and helping to manage your assets, not just uh, serve as a, a registered representative. Sorry for that, but, um, but selling you investments. You would want them to have a Series 65 or Series 66, something like that, that helps them, um, that, that positions them to be an advisor and to give advice on your investments as well as uh, on your overall financial situation. I would also argue your advisor needs to have a life and health insurance license, okay? They should be an expert in life and health. Why? Because they are gonna sell you some life insurance or health insurance or long-term care? Absolutely not. No, they need to understand the details of those tools so that they can give you great advice when, they, when they're looking at your comprehensive financial situation. They themselves may not be the individual that helps you get that insurance in place, but they've gotta be the generalist to be able to see the strategies as they look at your entire situation. So life and health insurance, possibly also a property and casualty, which is home and auto insurance, should have that as well. Again, not to be that expert in your life, but so that they can recognize opportunities and give you advice or look and, and point out, hey, there's some inconsistencies here. Hey, when I look at your overall net worth and how it's grown over the years, your home and auto coverage is now inadequate to fully protect all the assets that you have or taking a look at your coverage and saying, yeah, I don't know if you should have PLPD. If you don't have those licenses, you may not understand what all of, the, what all of that means. Um, underlying limits and, and um, UM, UIM coverage, blah, 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 those are all acronyms, but you're gonna wanna make sure that your financial advisor is well-breast on those, um, on, on those uh, topics so that they can give guidance even if they're not the expert serving as your agent. And then I, we are just so passionate about this at Corhorn Financial Group. One of the biggest gaps that we see for financial professionals is is financial advisors who maybe are helping with investments and they might call themselves a financial planner because they might even give you some suggestions with retirement, but they don't know taxes. And if they don't know taxes, I don't know how great their investment advice or, or financial planning advice can really be if you don't know taxes. So does your financial advisor need to have a certification in taxes? I would argue no. Be beneficial, certainly beneficial if they have a CPA along with their CFP. We've got a handful of those on our team here. Fantastic, brilliant folks. Um, do they need an enrolled agent? Doesn't necessarily hurt, but um, I would argue they don't necessarily need a tax certification, but having some tax experience is a must so that they can look at and point out tax strategies, not only to help you save taxes today, but for you to pay the least amount of tax over your lifetime. So do they need an actual tax certificate? No, they need some tax expertise though, absolutely. So we're biased, but what, what certifications, what designations should your advisor have? They must have a CFP. They should have some licenses or credentials for insurances, life insurance, maybe home and auto insurance, and they've gotta have some tax experience, and it'd be even better if they had a, C, uh, a CPA or an enrolled agent as well. That's a base minimum, a bare minimum. Should they have stuff on top of that? Absolutely, that'd be, that'd be fantastic, but those three are a minimum. That is the expectation and, and how all advisors are structured here at Corhorn Financial Group because we do comprehensive financial planning looking at all six areas of someone's financial life. So if that's not the guidance you're getting and the structure you're getting from your financial advisor, financial planner, you can call, always contact us over at Corhorn Financial Group. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.